Okay, so here we have a Mac Pro 2,1. Okay, so it's basically the same as a Mac Pro 1,1, i.e. the first Intel Mac Pro, sometimes referred to as a cheese grater because of this. Um, this came out, I think, 2007, 2008, something like that. Apple have basically crippled this machine for no good reason. Okay, so it's actually been a few days and you may notice from the slightly different setting that we're in a different place and that's because I massively underestimated the complexity in getting Linux on this machine. Um, a little bit of uh, research, I think the problem is the graphics card. It looks like the graphics card was replaced at some point earlier in its life unfortunately the graphics card that is in there doesn't support the boot sequence or the 32-bit efi doesn't have the right drivers to access that graphics card what i've done is i've ordered another graphics card off ebay um that will i believe allow me to see the boot sequence a few moments later uh, i started this linux build on the mac pro we have finally received what we hope is an Apple Flash graphics card, which will allow us to see the boot sequence and hopefully choose an alternative option so that we can choose to install Linux. NVIDIA GeForce GT120. This one's got a DVI and a, I think that was called a mini display port. Let's open the Mac and get it installed. All right, so let's have a look. We've got a little latch at the back. This one's got an extra power for a uh, video. Now I'm assuming that means at some point this has had another video card in as well. It's certainly not for this one. This one doesn't require extra power. I'm just gonna tuck that one out of the way for now. We don't need it at the minute. Uh, this will just be a thumb screw. Okay, that's what we wanted. Let's uh, get the side back on. So I think the first thing we'll do is just boot back into Mac and just make sure this card works at all. So at the minute we have nothing. We have the Mac town. Still not getting anything at boot time. I think we might have a broken card. That is a bit of a shame. Uh, also another delay. A few moments later. Oh, look at this. It's time for more frolicking. This is an NVIDIA G4 7300 with a massive 256 meg of RAM. This is, I believe, the video card that's gonna let me see the boot screen on my Classic Mac Pro 2.1. Looks like it's in fairly good condition, not perfect. You can see a little bit of grime building up there. Might give that a little bit of a wipe before we put it in. Let's start the foolishness, I guess. Okay, and what I think we'll try doing we know this one works, this NVIDIA Quadro, but we know we have some problems with the one that was in there. So let's get rid of this one for now. We'll have a look at how the new one fares. Can't see anything with my big fat hand in the way. Let's have a little bit more foolishness. So we are hooked up to another monitor, which I've already put my trusty little Linux installation media in there. I'm going to hold down the option key we have a boot screen. This is the first time we've seen a screen at this stage. And we have two. Seems it didn't see the Linux installation. We still can't get Linux installed because we can't get the boot screen to see a uh, installation media. Um, I think I'm gonna have to give up using or trying to use a USB stick. And instead I'm gonna just, I'm gonna put Linux on a DVD-ROM. Okay. So we have opened our DVD plus minus RW DVD burner. Okay, and the disc ejects at the end. Okay, <laughs> we have three images. We have Mac, we have Recovery HD, and we have Windows, which it is definitely not Windows. That's kind of weird, but we will uh, we'll go for that one. I can hear that disc spinning away. Ooh, okay, that doesn't look like it's very happy. A few moments later. The challenge with the classic Mac Pro 2.1, it continues. However, got an interest in, you know, possible lead on this. Apparently there are issues or there are some peculiarities with the SATA interfaced DVD drives. 
which is exactly what is in this one. It is a um, SATA connected instead of ID connected. So what we will do is see if we can get um, an ID cable back in here and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so we've removed this DVD drive that uses a SATA connector and we have put one that uses a IDE connector, which is a sort of big ribbon cable here. Uh, I'm gonna push it in, power it up, add DVD in there and see if this gets us any further. We've got the IDE drive hooked up. Tiny little squeaky noise coming from this other drive, which doesn't fill me with much optimism. Okay, again, we have a Mac, a recovery, and the disk that identifies itself as Windows for whatever reason, I don't really know why. So let's hit enter, see what we get. Uh, okay, we don't normally get a black screen, so that is different. Maybe the squeak does something new. So, oh, wow, okay. All right, well, this is the first, the first we've got for a while, I think. Uh, let's start the um, live view and see what it looks like. Okay, we have a Linux Mint logo. I can't remember if we've seen this earlier on. I mean, I've, I've been working on this for so long now, and I've been doing a couple of other projects. I can't remember what we have and haven't seen already. So the idea behind the live demonstration or the live image is for us to see if we like it, do all of the pieces of equipment that we have on our Mac or other device, do they work with this instance of Linux? And if they do, we can then hit the installation. So that's all I want to do. I want to get to the installation screen. All right, we've got sounds. We have a desktop. We have Wi-Fi networks that it can see, so that's interesting. And then when we're inside the uh, live desktop, um, from here we can look inside the computer. This is actually quite uh, a nice way of going in and recovering files that are lost from a file system, for example. So I'll be able to access the Apple file system from here. Let's just crack on with the installation. So let's go to install Linux Mint. The DVD is spinning quite a lot, so that's quite loud. In addition, because the side of the case isn't on, I can hear the noise coming from the graphics card as well. So it is there is a bit of wind noise or kind of spinning noise. Okay, so at the minute, the only thing that we are, or that we seem to be limited by is our RAM. Um, so although it has got, I think about eight gig of RAM, which, which is more than enough for Linux. We've got transferring data over IDE which is um, a little bit slow. Right, okay, so let's have a look for the activity monitor. I think it's called system monitor in Linux, yeah. Okay, I always forget. Test manager, activity monitor, system monitor. They all do the same thing, obviously. Let's just see if we can have a look how our resources are working. So we've got eight CPUs. CPU two is, is really putting in the uh, effort on this. Uh, 8 gig of RAM on this one. Drives might also be a bottleneck for this particular Mac. We might want to put some solid state drives in here at some point. Okay, disk is spinning up again. So, ah, okay, here we are. We're in the installation window. I'm just going to leave that there. Can I see the file systems? Can I see if they're working? No, I can't see that. Okay, so let's just leave it on resources for now. Anyway, let's get on with this. done we can restart now and uh, let's see what it looks like let's see if it boots into Linux straight away actually okay so the DVD ejected it's asking me to remove the installation medium I hit enter I'm currently connected up to the graphics card that doesn't support the boot screen all right okay so we went straight back into Linux that's good hopefully that is now my default boot because that's what I want I mean we can always come back out of that by just holding down the option key at the next boot and then go back into Mac OS 10. But Mac OS 10, Apple has abandoned this machine. We will do some more messing around with this machine, see if we can get a later OS than what Apple wants. My main driver for this project was to get Linux installed on here so that we have a fairly decent machine that runs the latest OS and has all the updates and is nice and secure and nice and safe and nice and modern. Booting into Linux is definitely slower than booting into Mac OS. We have lost some optimizations. Oh, and there we go. There's this little chime of happiness. All right, okay, but we have actually got absolutely bucket loads of updates to do, so we'll do that in a minute. 
Let me change the background because I really don't like this one. I don't know why they're so dark on these uh, Linux installations now. I like this one. I will start doing some updates. Uh, after that, we'll put Caden Life on here and see what it's like for processing videos.